to be completely blunt, we at the Russell Tribunal are putting the world on notice that in Gaza, we are heading towards crimes of great magnitude. I'm not a lawyer, and I will not quibble about words. I will not quibble about whether we're talking genocide or whether we're talking extermination. We're talking about the likely murder of large numbers of unarmed and captive civilians. Looking at the, the narrative that has led us to here, and looking at components of the spectacle that we are witnessing, I think that this is an inescapable conclusion. We all know, you all know, that um, the last aggression on Gaza didn't come out of the blue. This is the latest in a series of aggressions that have happened across the last few years since the siege on Gaza was put in place, if not, of course, before. Um, if we look at the characteristics of this, we have um, an unprecedented level of aggression. We have a captive population that is not allowed to escape and that does not have safe refuge within uh, the Gaza enclave. We look at the length of the attack and at how it was sustained, even in the face of widespread international condemnation. We look at the amount of munitions, the amount of munitions that were used, um, and we look at the proportion and the number of civilians, the number of children, the number of families that were wiped out. These are all characteristics that one would have thought would be impossible to get away with, yet they are getting away with it. Um, we look at the destruction of healthcare, of um, infrastructure, of community facilities, of industries, of farmland. We look at the, uh, the, the, uh, the destruction that is meant to last, such as the desertification of land and the diversion of water. We look at long-term consequences. These are, all, these are all crimes of magnitude, which on paper are just really, um, it's, I, I still find it unbelievable that Israel has actually gotten away with this so far. We would like also to draw attention, my colleagues have spoken um, about anecdotes. We would like to draw attention to evidence that we've heard. It is anecdotal, but it is very telling in uh, the, the, uh, um, the mindsets, the attitudes that it describes. So, for example, the jokiness with which killing is undertaken. So somebody is asked to step forward, take out his lighter, hold it up, and when he does that, he's shot. Okay? The, the game playing, the imaginary red line that the soldiers draw that nobody else knows about, and when somebody crosses it, they get killed. Um, the appearance of randomness like, uh, well, as, as Ken said, things like, you know, who speaks Hebrew? Someone spe says, steps forward and then gets shot. I think that what all this anecdotal evidence points to is it points to a contempt, of course, for the recipients of the violence. And it also, and that is part of the contempt, it belittles the experience. It belittles the action. It is as if these actions are not taking place in, in a serious world, in, an, in a world where one is accountable. Um, and that, I believe, is incredibly dangerous. It belittles the people and it belittles the significance of what is happening to them and it takes the crimes that are happening against them lightly, and it encourages the world to take them lightly. When we see this in the wider context of the racist attitudes and the racist language that is happening, of course, uh, not, I mean, that is happening in Israel, you saw yesterday the, um, the slides that were shown, and I will only quote a couple of them, uh, just because they are so incredibly shocking. So here's, uh, Naftali Bennett himself, I've killed many Arabs in my life and there's no problem with that. Um, you have, uh, okay, it's now, my thingy has frozen. But um, 
there were, there were various others. Let us turn this army into an army of, of Avengers. Um, Hitler was right, but he got the wrong people. So this is the discourse that is surrounding and that is creating the environment for the actions that are taking place in Gaza. So uh, basically, as I said, we are putting the world on notice that we, with very heavy hearts, believe that something of great magnitude will happen. And we believe that we are in time and the world is in time to stop it if the world will take action. As Michael said, we have a list of actions and a list of demands for um, the international community, for the EU, for the UN, 444, all listed at the end. Um, I would now like to just finally make two points. One is that um, there is no need to speak about the resilience, the sumud, the grace, the courage, the humanity of the Palestinians. Um, we would not all be here was, were that not just something that is accepted and that we know about and that we honor. I think we would also like to commend and to honor the small number of Jewish Israelis who are standing against what is happening in their country and in their society. We heard from very brave people yesterday. We hear from brave people all the time, really, whether they have had to leave and are living um, outside in, in the international community or whether they are uh, remaining at great, great cost to themselves and to their families and to their lives within um, the state of Israel. We honor them and we commend them and we stretch out a hand of friendship and solidarity to them.